Well, welcome back. We're talking about China's foreign policy in South and Central Asia. Still with us from Beijing, Ye Hailin, Chief Secretary of South Asia Studies at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Omar Samad is an advisor to the Chief Executive of Afghanistan and that country's former ambassador to Canada and France. And from Islamabad, Masood Khan is Pakistan's former ambassador to China and the United Nations. Ambassador Khan, let me start with you this time round. When we look at some of the comments coming out of Afghanistan, would it be fair to say that Afghans are deeply suspicious at times of Pakistan and of its motives? And as you pointed out earlier on, there needs to be some kind of confidence-building measures that need to be implemented. How do you bridge that divide? Yes, I mean, that's an effort uh, that we're making right now. When President Ashraf Ghani was here and he had talks with our prime minister, I think uh, we made some strides towards confidence building. Our chief of the army staff, General Rahil Sharif, he was in Kabul. He had talks with uh, his counterparts, but more importantly with uh, Mr. Abdullah Abdullah and President Ashraf Ghani. So I think that uh, all sorts of contacts are taking place. This is a time for leadership. This is not a time for point, point scoring because what happens is that this phenomenon, whatever we call it, um, terrorism, violent extremism, militancy, it knows no boundaries, no borders, and it has affected us all. Um, and we are suffering from the consequences of the developments that took place in the 1980s and the developments that have been taking place in the 1990s and since 2001. So this is a cumulative effect of all those uh, developments. And we have to, we, the countries of the neighborhood, we have to deal with them. And we have mm, two facilitators or supporters right now. We have the United States and China. Uh, these are world powers and they have a deep driving interest in steering the region towards stability. So this is a shared cause of Afghanistan and Pakistan because Afghanistan and Pakistan, their paths and destinies are interlocked. And uh, so what happens in one part uh, affects the other. And Hailin, if we look at the role that China has to play here, it's pretty unique, isn't it? Because China is seen as the honest broker by both countries, by both Afghanistan and Pakistan. So what does China bring to it? How does China help in bridging this divide? Frankly speaking, China bring the economy development opportunities, but not the aerodrome. So uh, let's put it into fact, China didn't pre, uh, try to put our, they, their own effort or their own investment on how to make the situation worse. We are open for how to make the situation better, especially in Afghanistan and Pakistan. In, in China's perspective, that both two countries' stability are very crucial for China. But the question is that how we can realize that? We don't have the many play uh, playing card with Taliban. We have no official contact with them. We have no uh, diplomatic tie with them. And w basically, we are not very familiar with them. So we highly rely on our Pakistan's partners' cooperation. And we highly rely on our Pakistan's effort to try to convince the Taliban to go back to the negotiation table. And also, we highly rely on our Afghanistan partners can realize their uh, heart of the Asia initiatives to re seeking for the national reconciliation and provide a peaceful and stability uh, domestic environment for the, for, for the foreign investors such as China. And also, just like the Ambassador Master Han mentioned, our Western territories has also suffered from the extremist and terrorist attacks. So we had to rely on our neighboring countries' cooperation to secure our territory. So that's the, our common interest. Because of the ch this common interest, China doesn't want to play the geopolitical game. We want to play the economy development and the social development game in these two countries. Um, Ambassador Samad, uh, Highland brings up an interesting point there when he talks about China's economic clout and uh, how that can be used as a force to bring peace to the region. Afghanistan, of course, is strategically located. Uh, you know, it's between Central Asia, South Asia, and the Middle East. And, um, you know, China, as we know, has embarked on the One Belt, One Road initiative in Central Asia. So a stable, peaceful Afghanistan uh, can bring enormous benefits yes. to the region, can't it? Absolutely. And, and this is what we've all been saying for years, that a peaceful, stable Afghanistan, a sovereign Afghanistan, is a, 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 a country that is run according to the will of its own people, and where people want to have good and peaceful relations and cooperation uh, at all levels with all its neighbors. But 
there's just, there has been this one thorn on the side of everyone. And, and so we, we have all identified what this is. We all know that if we take this thorn out, uh, we will be in a bad, much better position. And so this is why there is this concerted effort on the part of at least these four countries, as well as the international community at large, uh, that to, to bring the Afghan issue to an end game, per se, or end solution, and, and a resolution of the conflict. And so in order for us to do this, each party has a role to play. The Afghan government is playing its role. The Chinese are doing whatever they can to facilitate and to encourage. The Americans who would like to disengage because of this long war that has created fatigue in, in the United States also would like this to end. And so Pakistan as well has been hurt by all of this. And, and we're all looking toward for Pakistan to help all of us in order to be able to uh, resolve this issue and, and, and come to some understanding that would, as our friends have said, uh, ultimately uh, uh, result in a win-win situation. If we do not identify the thorn and basically in one way or the other, either through talks or dialogue or through surgical means, take it out, we are going to continue to bleed. And this is not good for the region or any of these countries. Right, and there's also a big peace dividend for Pakistan, isn't there, Ambassador Khan? China has committed to invest something like $46 billion in Pakistan, mainly in the power sectors and in infrastructure development. Um, so all this portends well, should there be a peace agreement uh, quickly in the region? Yes, it should be, because uh, China-Pakistan economic corridor uh, is a central plank of the diplomacy, regional diplomacy, uh, based on economic geography which is being pursued. Uh, we attach highest importance to this project because it's a game changer for Pakistan, both economically and strategically. And I think that we uh, believe that Afghanistan is very much part, potentially very much part of this corridor. And uh, it's not just the corridor, it's also the belt and the road. The belt and the road, in fact, uh, are joined by this uh, CPEC. Um, and therefore, it is not just confined to Pakistan and China, but to the entire region. And uh, the uh, Ambassador Samad was talking about the zone. Everybody has identified the zone, uh, and everybody is trying to resolve this thorny issue. Now here, you have to understand Pakistan's perspective also, that Pakistan has also been the worst victim of terrorism for the past uh, two decades. And uh, we are determined to eliminate it from our soil. Uh, we, are, we have mounted a very successful op operation, it's called Operation Arbe uh, Azm, and uh, we have succeeded. We have also um, declared that we would take on all forms of violence, um, whether this is religious or ethnic. So that being Pakistan's resolution and determination, uh, we have also given a clear signal uh, in regard to the groups which are operating in Afghanistan that there should be zero tolerance for violence and all forms of violence has to be renounced. Um, because this morning, in fact, in another setting, I made a remark that peace would not be delivered on the battlefields, but on peace tables. And that's what Pakistan government, all its states, state institutions included, are trying to pursue. And we have to build this good faith between Afghanistan and Pakistan so that together we move forward. And uh, we are not held back by uh, self-doubt or of uh, misgivings about each other. Okay, Haile, in a very quick question here, I've only got about a minute left, and I want to ask you, to what extent are China's efforts uh, in the region, both diplomatic and economic efforts, uh, an attempt to counter US influence in the region, the so-called US pivot to Asia, as it's sometimes called? 
I, I don't think there is a competition between China and U.S. in Afghanistan, in Pakistan. Actually, the stability in this region is the common concern, a common interest and the common concern of these two countries. We do have a lot of problems between China and the U.S., especially on the China eastern coastal areas, such as the South China Sea. But in the western part, currently, our common target is fighting against the terrorists, seeking for the regional stability. So in this part, I won't say there's a competition. I will call this a coordination. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks to all of you for joining us.